fun to mount. Welcome to Mother is Shoy here. We're glad you made it. Hello, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to our service. Welcome to Mount. Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. Welcome, Welcome to, to Mount. Mount. Welcome to Mount. Welcome to Mount. We're glad you could make it. Welcome to our service. Welcome to Mount. With you here. We're glad you can make it. Welcome to Mount. Welcome to Mount. Thanks for tuning in. We're, We're glad you could make it. Welcome to Mount. Welcome to our service. Welcome to our service. Welcome to Mount. Welcome to Mount. Welcome. Welcome. Wish, wish you were you. Welcome to Mount. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Well, welcome this November morning as we remember all those who've fallen, who've given their lives and have been killed right around the world. We know our God sees each one. And he also knows us. He welcomes us this morning. Not because we have done anything good, but because of his son, Jesus, and his death and resurrection for every person he has made. He welcomes us this morning as we remember them. So let's pray before we observe a minute's silence together. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the lives of everyone that you have created. Lord, thank you for those who've given their lives in their calling right across this world. Lord, we pray for all those who've been left behind. Would you please comfort them through Jesus, your Son? Lord, would you please draw near Lord, draw near all those who are grieving, all those who are suffering, we ask. Lord, would you come close to people today who are missing loved ones? Lord, we ask this and we please pray. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, and for the eternal life that he brings. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, let's together observe a minute's silence. God's word this morning says this, as you read it, it's a call to worship. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. Amen. Well, we normally sing a psalm, and uh, there's a psalm for every experience of life. And this is Psalm 22. My God, my God, oh why have you forsaken and abandoned me? Why are you far from giving help, from listening to my anguished plea? 
A pack of dogs encloses me, their circle around me is complete. I am beset by evil men, and they have pierced my hands and feet. Come quickly, rescue me, my strength. Do not be far from me, O Lord. Save me from power of evil dogs, my precious life from cruel sword. He has not scorned the suffering which on the afflicted one is laid. He did not hide his face from him, but listened to his cry for aid. The whole world will remember him and turn towards the Lord their God. All peoples will bow down to him, the nations of the world abroad. Jesus really does know our sufferings and our pains. Christ has suffered for our sins and he has taken them away. In him, your sins of this week are gone. So members of the church, visitors, children, everyone watching, if you doubt your sins are forgiven, when you look to Christ, he gives us this promise in his word. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So let's pray. Our Father, thank you for the eternal life and inheritance waiting for us when Christ returns. Thank you for each other. And Lord, thank you for Jesus. Because of him, forgive us for sinning against others and for sinning against you. Lord, we have sinned in our homes Lord, in church, Lord, in our callings, in our work situations. Forgive us when we don't take responsibility, Lord, when we shirk. So we acknowledge that our sin comes from within us and we need cleaning from the inside. Lord, this morning we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us of those sins, Lord, even in the inward parts. Lord, give us new life so we would turn to you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. If you have trusted Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, be assured that he died for your sins and his resurrection is proof that they are gone. Your sins are utterly and completely forgiven. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Well, we're going to look uh, later when we turn in our Bibles to uh, Leviticus, the day that explains everything. Uh, But we're going to read from Colossians uh, chapter 1, first of all. It says this, verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth. Things visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through Death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. Under which I, Paul, have become a servant. May God really speak to us about everything from His word. Thank you. What a 
another warm welcome to each of you this morning. At this point of the service, we'd normally take collection, um, but obviously that's not possible at the moment. And you'll see the details appearing on the screen if you'd like to give to the Lord's work online. This evening we have a virtual open mic night. It's this evening at half past seven. It's after the Good News meeting. Please be there for the Good News meeting at six, members. Uh, please, everyone, you'd be welcome to join us and hear the good news that Jesus brings tonight. And do join after. See your emails, members. Uh, there'll be codes there for the Zoom meeting or YouTube. And if you'd like to join us, please message our Facebook page and we'll get the details across to you as well. It's children's prayer meeting on Tuesday, so members, please be there. Um, please uh, make every effort, if you can, uh, to be there. And, and please um, have your children there in the meeting, if you're able, um, so we can see them just for a part of the meeting. It's only over Zoom this week. Um, that's very deliberate. Um, please uh, get in touch if you need help about how to use that. But it will be at 7.30 as normal. And students, if you're new in Swansea, um, if you've been tuning in and you want to know about uh, what might be happening over the coming weeks, what we've got happening for students, please message us on Facebook and uh, we will get back to you. Lewis, one of our elders, is going to lead us in prayer as a church now. Thanks, Lewis. Father, we want to thank you this morning for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have sent him and he has completely swallowed up all of our sin in his death on the cross for us. That in Jesus' life, Father, we pray that we'd know this new life uh, this morning. Father, thank you for talking to us a lot through Leviticus. Father, help us to love each other. Help us to speak in church, Lord. Father, please would you talk to us as we read Numbers as a church. Uh, Lord, help us and just guide and direct us, Lord, as we read your word. Father, in our callings, help us to love you. Help us to love everyone that we come into contact with, at home, at school, at work and in church. And Lord, please would you talk to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And if you can turn in your Bibles to Leviticus, if you turn your Bibles to Leviticus, and um, it is the most remarkable uh, of passages, isn't it? Where, where I'll just read uh, Leviticus chapter 16 and verses 29 through to the end. <clears throat> This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you must deny yourselves and not do any work, whether native born or alien living among you. Because of this day of atonement, you may be for you, to cleanse you. Then before the Lord, you will be clean from all your sin. It is a Sabbath of rest, from all, and you must deny yourselves. It is a lasting ordinance. The priest who is anointed and ordained to succeed his father as high priest is to make atonement. He is to put on the sacred linen garments and make atonement for the most holy place, for the tent of meeting and the altar, and for the priests and all of the people of the community. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. Atonement is to be made once a year for all the sins of the Israelites. And it was done the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. Shall we pray? Oh God, now Father, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us about everything. <clears throat> Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> the invention of the sat-nav has been a great blessing for many marriages, I imagine. Uh, I think before sat-nav, there were so many rows that would occur over the map. Uh, the great question that would occur is, well, where am I now? There's nothing worse than someone saying, you're on that page, and then you would say, where exactly am I now? Same thing happens with sat-nav, even though I just follow the instructions, even though one day I think I'm going to end up being one of those people who ends up in the middle of a lake or something. But when you're lost, you might know generally where you are, but where exactly are you? And how can you pull all of that together? That's really what happened every year to the church in Israel. 
a day where they would stop and say, where am I now? And where is that in relation to everything else that goes on around me? This is the reason David was able to conquer giants, partly because he saw the Day of Atonement every day. It was the reason why Isaiah could have faith while being sawn in half, Daniel in the lion's den, people of God in exile. It was the reason they were able to stand in the most confusing and terrifying times of plagues. It was the reason when they were able to rejoice. It was the reason that they could see they could take heaven on earth. Not a vague view that there's a God and you trust him, but that a day that shows the atonement of Jesus Christ, that tells you exactly where you are in life and exactly where you're going and exactly where you're meant to be and makes you realize how found you are. One day, just before winter kicked in, in the middle of October, one day where the leaves had started falling from the tree and the cold weather had settled in and nobody knew what the winter was bringing, a day to explain everything. The day of atonement. So we'll run through it. It's a lot of information. Sometimes I'll give quotes which we give to the children. You can do the actions at home if you want. Uh, and I know it's not as much fun as uh, with me do, uh, doing them rather than the puppets. But you can do the actions if you want. But the verses still stand truth. Because it's a day about school, it's a day about home, it's a day about work, it's a day about maths, it's a day about English, it's a day about retirement, it's a day about COVID, it's a day about pensions and mortgages and American politics. It's in fact a day that covers absolutely everything you can see and everything you can't and pulls it all together. On that day, there was a home at the center, the home of God, the tabernacle of God, the place which shows us what is going on in heaven that rules this world and what is going on on earth. You see, everything that happens in our lives is not an accident. In fact, in him we live and move and have our being. Nothing just happens. It's all part of God's purpose. The only problem is, is we can't see that purpose, and we don't know how it can be explained, but the Lord knows. So that whatever goes on at home, or in school, or in work, or in retirement, in life, or in death, in nations, in diseases, we know that there is a home that God has had, has made, that can make sense of absolutely everything. The tabernacle itself, earth and heaven. Nothing is out of control. It just is totally confusing to us. But have no doubt, in him you live and move and have your being. Everything is under God's control. The second thing that's so important to know about the Day of Atonement is not only is there a place that explains everything that can and will happen to you and will happen in this universe. There is one who is shown by a high priest. There is one who is the author of life. There is one who is the intercessor between God and man and can explain things to you. Thomas Brooks, the Puritan, said, God is incomprehensible outside of Christ. God has a massive plan, but it makes no sense to me and you except he has chosen one to explain it. It's a bit like when you see a car and I have no idea what goes on under the bonnet of a car. And then somebody comes along and explains it to you so that you can drive it and make sense of it. Same thing with a computer. Same thing with your boiler in your house. 
They're all intercessors and making sense. Same thing with an electrician. So it is, Jesus Christ is the intercessor between God and man that makes sense of everything. He is the author of life. He is the priest, high priest of the Most High God. He is the king of what is right. He is the king of peace and righteousness. He is the king of life. He is God's one mediator. And every year, the Israelites would have this one who would explain the universe to them. This one who would play the role of Jesus Christ. And amazingly, he would carry the church's name on his shoulders and on his heart. It's like there's a picture of the whole universe. And the first question whenever I see a picture It's really tragic. It is really tragic. But the first time whenever I see a picture is, where am I? How do I look? Where do I fit in? Did I make a mistake? It's my hair. Well, my hair doesn't even exist anymore. Where am I in this story? My name is written on his shoulders of the high priest. My name is written on his heart. I am involved. I am not the center of the universe but I am attached to center by the most high priest of God. So if God's got a plan and he's got one who explains it, why is this world such a mess? And how is God going to fix you and fix everything? And so the most high priest comes out, not with his incredible outfit showing Christ, not revealing his power and his glory. He comes out this one day dressed just like you and just like me. The way that Jesus Christ came into this world, the priest of the Most High God, was not with fanfare and trumpets. That day will come. He came and was born in a shed. He was just like any one of us. In fact, the Bible says he had no natural charisma. Nothing stood out. God, who is the high priest, comes out and he's just like us. And on every day of atonement, the people of Israel would see that it is the high priest of God who came in flesh and became just like me and you, and was tempted in every way. He comes out on that day, and he shows his work. How does he show his work? Well, there are two goats. The first one is chosen by Lot. That's a a way of drawing, uh, uh, deciding randomly. The first one is a sin offering. The first one shows the work of Jesus in the fact that it dies for the sins that we have committed that have corrupted this world. This sin offering, this offering that shows not only outward sin but inward sin, this goat stands in the place of the high priest showing that one day Jesus was going to come. And the way he'd sought out this universe is by shedding his blood, becoming a sin offering offering on the cross that his hands his feet God himself was crucified to reconcile the whole universe that he died and that high priest would take the blood of that goat and he would go where we couldn't go on our own he would go into the tabernacle And he would go beyond the curtain which separates us from the Father. And he would go to the very center of the universe where everything will be judged. And he would place that blood, his own blood, Jesus would, on the mercy seat of the Father. So that your sin and my sin would be removed. And that you could be right with God, right in your conscience but right in heaven as well, so that you could boldly talk to the Father, 
That's how God makes sense of this world. He sent Jesus to become one of us, and He became a sin offering, and He paid for your sin with His blood. The Bible says you were paid for with the blood of God. And the place that controls the universe is not some terrifying place of judgment for you if you look to Christ. It's a place where your sins have been paid for. It's a seat where God shows mercy and grace in your time of need. But there's no limit to this atonement. He not only pays for your sin, He actually cleanses the whole universe. Every single part of the heavens and the earth, the blood of Jesus cleanses and reconciles. So he not only cleanses your conscience, he cleanses everything about your life. He redeems politics and maths and English and pensions and every part of your life. He cleanses every single part. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He didn't only die for your sins. He reconciled the whole world to himself. He means that means now there is hope and peace and all that's been ruined by sin has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. How do I know my sins are forgiven? The high priest comes out again. And he doesn't stand out. But he puts his hand on the scapegoat. The scapegoat takes away all that is wrong in your life. And because the scapegoat lives, you can live also. You see, the scapegoat shows the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The first goat shows his death. The second goat shows his resurrection. Where are your sins? They're gone and Jesus has taken them far away. Because he lives, you are now right with God. You never have to justify yourself again. You never have to bring any sacrifices. You never have to try harder. All you need, he's provided. And because he lives, you can live at home and in school and in work. Because he lives, there's not a single area of your life that doesn't have hope. Because he lives, you can, the things you cannot do can be put right. Because he lives, you can now enjoy his creation. And after that scapegoat is gone, the high priest disappears again. And everyone waits. That is where we are now. That's where your life is now. Even though it looks like chaos around, because Jesus Christ has died and risen and sits in heaven, your place is fixed secure. Because your Savior now sits in heaven and because he died and rose again, your life is hid in Christ, in God. And even though everything is chaos and difficult now, because your friend and your Savior carries his, your name on his shoulders and on his heart, you look to him and you realize that he, as it shows on the Day of Atonement, always prays for you. The one who bore the worst of your sin, the one who rose for your justification, prays for you because he loves you. And even though you cannot see him, the last part of the Day of Atonement, he comes out. Not like he came the first time with the goats showing how sin is removed. This time he comes out as he is on the Day of Atonement. He comes out and he's God on his forehead, holiness to the Lord. He comes out and you can see the decisions of eternity on his chest and on his heart. He comes out and he's wearing the full robes, the palmy grinds, and the bells announcing good news. He comes out to show that one day 
He is going to make everything right. All he has paid for, he now collects on that great day. The day when Jesus returns. And every eye will see him for who he is. And he will bring this clean, new creation. And you will have a body that is like him. And you will live with him forever. It was all shown on just one day, the Day of Atonement. And every day, every year of David's life, he would have seen it. And every year of Isaiah's life, he would have seen it. And every year of Daniel's life, he would have remembered it. And all those Old Testament saints, as they saw this visual representation of the eternal life and death and resurrection and second coming of Jesus Christ gave them hope. Whether they were standing in front of Goliath, whether they were in a den of lions, whether they were confused in exile or whether they were taking heaven on earth or whether they were facing plagues, they realized that they were lost But if they could find where Jesus had come, if they could find what Jesus had done, if they could see where Jesus is, if they could know what Jesus was going to do, they would never be lost again. Because Jesus came into this world and he did seek and he did save those who were lost. You see... If you were to be found, you've got to find Jesus. If you're going to make sense of math or English or school or work or death or life or anything in all creation because it was all made for him and through him and by him, if you're going to make any sense of any of it, you must look Jesus. And no lockdown will cause you to fear or opening up or COVID-19 or financial reverse or any other concern that you have. Because he lives. You can live in home, in school, in work, in life, and yes, even in death. He lives. Not only in him we live and move and have our being, but Jesus Christ has made sense of it all for the whole world and everything that's in it. All you must do is look to Jesus Christ who on the Day of Atonement paid for your sins on the day of atonement makes sense of the heavens and the earth on the day of atonement showed that one day he will return and there will be a new heavens and a new earth and there will only be righteousness on the day of atonement the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached the question is Are you going to believe that good news and put your trust in him? Amen. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen.